Good morning everyone. It's Friday morning and we're going to come together for our last Bible reading of this week um, just as we read together from Proverbs chapter 26. So let's hear God's word together. Honour is no more associated with fills than snow with summer or rain with harvest. Like a flitting sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its unintended victim. Guide a horse with a whip, a donkey with a bridle, and a fool with a rod on his back. Don't answer the foolish arguments of fools, or you'll become as foolish as they are. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of a fool, or they will become wise in their own estimation. Trusting a fool to convey a message is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. A proverb in the mouth of a fool is as useless as a paralysed leg. Honouring a fool is as foolish as trying a stone to as, as tying a stone to a slingshot. A proverb in the mouth of a fool is like a thorny branch brandished by a drunk. An employer who hires a fool or a bystander is like an archer who shoots at random. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. There is more hope for fools than for people who think they are wise. The lazy person claims there's a lion on the road. Yes, I'm sure there's a lion out there. As the door swings back and forth on its hinge, so the lazy person turns over in bed. Lazy people don't take food in their hand. They don't even lift it to their mouth. Lazy people consider themselves smarter than seven wise counsellors. Interfering in someone else's argument is as foolish as yanking a dog's ears. Just as damning as a dead man shooting a deadly weapon, as a madman shooting a deadly weapon, is someone who lies to a friend and then says, I was only joking. Fire goes out without wood and quarrels disappear when gossiping stops. A quarrelsome person starts fights as easily as hot embers light charcoal or fire lights wood. Rumours are dainty morsels that sink deep into one's own heart. Smooth words may hide a wicked heart, just as a pretty gaze covers a clay pot. People may cover their hatred with pleasant words, but they're deceiving you. They pretend to be kind, but don't believe them. Their hearts are full of many evils. When their hatred may be concealed by, while their hatred may be concealed by trickery, their wrongdoing will be exposed in public. If you set a trap for others, you will get caught in it yourself. If you roll a boulder down on others, it will crush you instead. A lying tongue hates its victims and flattering words cause ruin. Amen. Again, some interesting words from Solomon's wisdom. Some interesting phrases. Um, he does tend to use the word fill quite a lot. Um, not in a derogatory way but in somebody who just won't take time to understand won't take time to learn quite often the jews is someone who has hardened their heart to god because they are foolish for doing so um, and he warns against the perils or, or the trouble that people like that can break can bring but some of the things he says are quite interesting I mean, one which is seems awful when you read it quite graphic is verse 11 as the dog returns to its vomit, so a fill repeats its foolishness. Basically, if we're not prepared to learn from our mistakes, then we are foolish. We should learn from our mistakes so that we don't repeat them. That's what learning to be wise is all about. And repeating our mistakes is repeating our sins. Um, if there's something which we know that we shouldn't do, but yet we keep on doing it, we should be stopping. And we are foolish if we don't. Um, and we should ask God for the strength to, to do that. But right at the very end, it says in the last couple of verses, um, if you set a trap for others, you will get caught in it yourself. If you roll a boulder down on others, it will crush you instead. Um, you know, we shouldn't try and catch other people out. We shouldn't be mean and spiteful to other people. That's not what living a life for God is all about. It's actually about reaching out to others, helping them, um, helping those who can't help themselves, helping the person who is um, struggling. And, and that's what we need to do instead. So there's a warning there, but don't try and catch other people out. Don't set traps for them, as, as Solomon puts it. 
because you only get caught out yourself. Don't try and be nasty to the people. You, they'll end up coming back and people will be nasty to you instead. Don't try and hurt people because you're the one who'll end up getting hurt. Instead of hurting people, we need to reach out and, and help people. We need to mend fences, not build fences. Uh, there was a story I heard um, a long time ago. It was, it was about how we should reach out to one another. It was a story about two brothers living beside each other with a stream in between each other and how they fell out and how one brother built a fence to um, keep the other brother out and then the other brother built the fence higher and then the first brother built the fence higher again and then he heard um, more wood being delivered next door and he thought oh he's building that fence even higher again but instead the brother knocked a hole in the fence to build a bridge over the stream and that's what we should be doing rather than building fences rather than putting obstacles in its way rather than trying to hurt a person we should be trying to mend those broken fences with bridges and trying to unite one another and that's Solomon's wisdom is all about that about learning about helping about reaching out even where he says about don't answer the foolish arguments of a fool and then says be sure to answer in other words don't get caught up in that silly argument but actually show instead what is the right way what is the proper way what is the godly way and by that, we'll be blessed by doing that. It might be hard for us. It might get thrown back in our face, but it will bless us eventually. Uh, and, and that's what God calls us to do. And that's what living with the attitude of Christ is all about. So let's not be foolish. As we head into the weekend, and let's not be foolish in many ways. We can say, let's not be foolish in our behaviour. We hear about foolish behaviour at the minute, but all the time. Let's not be foolish in how we behave to other people and how we... Um, react around them or how we act around them Let, let's reach out instead in love let's help people um, but in everything in our whole attitude let's not be foolish but let's let us have wisdom which comes from God so that we can help each other thanks for watching again this morning folks uh, we're going to pray now um, and then there's no more streaming this week uh, tomorrow we'll take the day off Sunday we'll have our service at 11 o'clock you're very welcome to come along and join us online. Uh, it'd be great to have you join in and then be back on Monday morning again at 9.30 with our Bible readings. But let's pray right now. Father, thank you again for this day that you've given to us. Thank you again for the wisdom of your word. Lord, as we head out into the day, help us to be wise and not foolish. Help us to bring love and not hatred. Help us to help and not to hinder. Lord, help us to bring that flavour of you to those who are around us, to show them you in our actions, so that anyone who doesn't know you may turn to you. Father, thank you. Thank you for looking after us. Thank you for all your provision for us so far this day. Continue to look after us this weekend. And as we join together on Sunday, either here at Strain or whatever church we are watching, Lord, may we truly know your presence and your blessing. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks folks for joining in great to see you take care and every blessing bye for now